Basketball podcast. 76's podcast. Mm. Apparently. They're fun. No Sixers talk to me. Okay. None. Okay, fine. I, I'm lying. I know. A little bit. I'm Ben Dietrich. With me, as usual, Jordan Rodelli. What's up? Really good no. You are. You're a little bit. <laughs> ben gave me a couple of eggs. Dipped in beets. Yeah. Pickled eggs. Pickled vinegar beet eggs. Bar food. Mm-hmm. Andrew Closer. What's up, guys? What's happening? Feeling good? Feeling good? Quo, why don't you introduce a return special guest? Friend of the pod, good homie, Noel Lennox is here with us. What's up, guys? Panda Bear. Thanks for having me. The Panda Bear. It's exciting to have Noel in, in, the, in the lab. Excited to be here. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> so let's just get right down to this. Panda Bear in New York City, why are you here? What are you doing out of Portugal? Okay, I'm here to play two shows at Pioneer Works. Just that. That I'm out. You played Tomorrow. one last night, right? One last night, one tonight. That's Red Hook. We'll be there. Red Hook, yeah. In a, in a zone I'd never really been to before, despite living on Atlantic Avenue, which is maybe, you can throw a stone to it. from. Was, it, was there a lot of people showing up on city bikes? It's, I don't know how people are out, out there. there. Yeah, it's how was that Yellen's place. kind of a no man's land out there. Yeah. People you, lining up for the Ikea bus to get home from a show? Mm-hmm. My brother used to live in Red Hook, and I was in Carroll Gardens on the other side of that little mm-hmm. overpass. Carroll Gardens over was there. nice. This was like 99, uh-huh. so there wasn't as much development when I, was, when I first moved in there, but we would go to Sonny's a lot. Uh, What's Sonny's? The fabled Red Hook Bar, which is oh, okay. a fantastic bar. Fantastic. Sonny passed away maybe seven years ago, five years ago, something, mm-hmm. but still there, really good. If you go there on a summer night, you can watch the, like, the sunset, you're on the water, it's... Very sort of wharfish. Mm-hmm. Have you guys been to Pioneer Works? It's just a big like arts warehouse space. They have a little outside zone. They made a fire out there. It's pretty cool. I've never a seen a bonfire. show there, but it sounds exciting. It's a cool spot. It's cool. I've seen fashion shows there, and mm. I've seen. I've been to a wedding there, I believe. It's awesome. It's awesome. Dustin Yellen, right? It's a cool space. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of fashion shows, Ben's got his uh, brand new. Cool dad shoes on. All right, we're debating these shoes this morning. Right, let's, let's talk about it. your shoes. Let's do it. Talk, tell us about Show these no shoes, your shoes man. Okay, they look right, really they comfortable. They are super comfortable. They are hokas that, and this is not like a particular plug other than the fact that they sponsored my friend Kalina Strada's fashion show. So mm-hmm. she had a lot of hokas around afterwards. So and always she gave so me a pair. hokas at fashion shows. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so they're, they're black leather hokas. And Jordan has been advocating for the Hoka for a long time, and I didn't listen. He didn't listen. Ben's had foot problems for many years. <laughs> I've been trying to get him into these like weird USA made plantar fasciitis. Weird, like uh, they have a rocking motion to them. They look ridiculous. Do you, but do you rock your defenders to sleep? I'm typically rock them in the face and stab their brain with a nose bone. Would would Hoka be able to make a basketball shoe with that same rocking motion? I don't know. Or would could it you, change your could lateral? Could you play movement? in those? The running shoes. I I don't know because they are, as Jordan described, slightly arced. Yeah, they have on sort the of a curve at, at the sole. And I wasn't accustomed to that. So concave, I would say. Hmm. I think maybe so. Yeah, convex. No, convex is the other way. Oh. Are you sure? Yeah, not sure at all. I think they're convex, right? I think concave is in. Yeah, I, I don't know. So they are in. Depending on which way, you depending on which way you look at them, yeah, depending, depending if you're looking at the ceiling or the floor, right? Oh, for God's <laughs> sake! No, you guys got to stop that shit because people are like, "Ooh, that's the ceiling." Who is it? Who is this people you keep people. on mentioning? So people you're just being like, accosted by individuals yes. in the street who are yelling, "The ceiling is the floor at you." Yes. Like, which one is this? The ceiling or the floor? I'm like, fuck off. That's the best so thing I've accomplished. Jordan claims that people don't want to hear about the Sixers, which I'm kind of. Agree, in agreement with, but there's just so much Sixers news, man. But before that, we got to talk about these shoes. Uh, yeah, the, the on, shoes man. are really the sense of urgency here. Um, wearing them for the first time, it does take a little acclimation because of this rocking motion. So I was coming <laughs> down, I was coming, I was coming down the subway steps, and uh, you know, I was trying to see if the train was still on the station, and it wasn't. It was pulling out 
like doors closed, already in motion. And I kind of lost balance as I tried to plant my foot due to the rocking motion. And it made me go into like a falling sprint. Like, would you say a full tilt boogie? Yeah. Yeah, it was a full tilt boogie. Remember the, re- uh, the What's Happening intro where Rerun's running after the truck? It was that. Kind of leaning forwards. Yeah, like- it was the leaning, wheeling arms run into right. the train station as people were leaving. But the train was already like 30 seconds past. And people looked at me like I was in it. In a totally insane person, so that is one I think it was, hazard of the. They hookah. were like, "There's that Sixers we, truth there." We liked the 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 pesa. It was like flying in and then slipped on the beer it, during the malice at the palace. Was it uh, this, was that Jermaine O'Neal? Yeah, it was. But this this noise started. And it was like I I I I I. I, 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 I was just like wheeling in place. It was yeah. really really freaky. So yeah, be careful with your yeah. rocking hokas. So I was in uh, Portugal a few months ago. Not to brag, wow. um, where <laughs> Noah lives, and I was noticing everyone's shoe style, and I was around Taurus. I got to admit, I was on the beaten path, um, but people were wearing a lot of dad shoes, man. Like they weren't the crispiest dad shoes, but they were still things that would pass in New York, and people would stop and notice. No, what do you think? What's happening in the in the dad shoe scene in Lisbon? I have to assume it's because the tourists are walking all over the place, so they want really comfortable shoes. So it's it's function over form, I would assume. Uh, and the, Lisbon's really hilly and kind of uh, the pavement is often, it's like cobblestones a lot, so it can be sort of uncomfortable to walk for a long time. So do you think the rocking motion of hokas would be treacherous on the It might down? be a little bit. The craziest thing is when it rains there, which it doesn't do often, but the, the stones get really slick. So I've seen a couple like old ladies hit the deck what? coming down a hill, just pancake. It's pretty rough to see. I've you, done it myself as well. You were here on the show like two years ago, maybe. Mm-hmm. And I had never been to Portugal at that point. I'm not mm-hmm. sure if Quo had, who's being very boastful about his adventures. Oh, come on. Oh, you I love try. to bring up your Portugal. I know, ec- man. Ec- I'm pay. bringing it up right now. <laughs> oh, shades of Mexico City. He bought gloves. I, I'm bringing it up. Yeah. What I'm saying is I did not understand how hilly it was. Yeah. It is... Steep. It, it's real it's up and down. It's very steep. Now you can tell us about the gloves that you bought again. He knows where I got the gloves. I actually I don't. Oh my goodness! I need to stay living Lisbon. The old lady with a little the little shack on <laughs> the know, street who sells lady. the gloves and falls down hills. Yeah, yeah she's yeah, probably same lady. Yeah, same lady. She's tough. She nope. used to she used to not sell gloves, and she fell down a hill, and that's all she was able to do. That's why she the makes street. the gloves actually. The <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <They're> bad <laughs> grace. But like I said, when I came back from Lisbon on the show, I was like, "There's no basketball jerseys anywhere. There was like no no NBA. You don't see many." I saw, I saw a Gallinari jersey for sale in a oh, secondhand nice. shop. That was the only one I saw. Strangely, I feel like the most popular team is Chicago. I see a lot of Bulls gear. Still Bulls stuff? Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. That reminds me like of D-Rose. Australia. You know, really quickly before we jump off this dad shoe train, Kawhi Leonard dropped a new ad for his uh, dad shoe basketball sneakers that are coming out All-Star Weekend. What did you guys think of that? What did you think? Well, this is a uh, New Balance ad. It's a New Balance ad. Well, can you describe the ad? What what is, what went down, Jordan? Well, it was filled with attitude. <laughs> no, um, no, have you seen this? I haven't. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm listening intently. Okay, so <laughs> there's lots of like sc- like scratch film uh, writing mixtape and uh-huh. mixtape and like dirty film and, Black and pencil white. illustrations. Uh, Does he laugh? No. <laughs> yeah, Not bad. I was, pretty, I was pretty close. End it with that. Uh, mm. And it basically mm. is like telling, it's basically a shitting on other players. It's telling everyone like that Kawhi doesn't need to do this and doesn't, he doesn't need to, need to do that. Flop. He, he doesn't, doesn't need to, yeah, was it, uh, doesn't need to um, draw. It was like self calls or it was definitely like draw a shot at Harden. Uh, yeah, shot at Harden. Uh, he doesn't have to be grouchy. Shot at Durant. Um, Oh, it doesn't doesn't have to have like burners, or doesn't need to like oh, no, check, doesn't, the doesn't need to check the comments. Check the comments. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Doesn't need to post selfies. Like, it was really kind of probably LeBron, I guess. I think it was LeBron, and it was like a black and white shot of him just like waving his finger, saying "hush," and like all these things. Like, doesn't need to do this. Like, superimposed on top of it. It's like a, a minute and a half. Yeah, it wasn't long. And then it said uh, Kawhi doesn't need to scream to get your attention. Ba ba, he's already got it. And it's like, eh, only for being a dick. But it was also a little bit like, like the Roots What They Do video or something. It's like, 
Well, it was very dated. The entire content is like being opposed to things that other people are doing. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, we don't need to have champagne or like women dancers. Like, but you're still talking about those yeah. things. You don't so, need yeah. to, but it'd be cool if you did. Yeah. If you but don't want like, to, if you don't want your producer to be in your videos, you know. <laughs> well, they got to come up with something. I mean, there's not much to work with with them, right? Exactly. Like, I don't even know why they signed him in the first place. I was psyched on that. Of was, course you were. But everyone was talking about it, right? So it dropped, and then, like, it, basketball Twitter was really happy with it, and there were so many jokes, and, like, it made me really appreciate Wyden and Kennedy and Nike, who do, like, such a good job, I think. Well, with Kawhi, it was interesting because they announced the deal, and then he kept wearing Jordans, which was his <laughs> former employer. Weird. For a while, and then this was, I guess, the announcement of the actual sneaker. Do they show the the? No, they're blurred out. Yeah, yeah, we don't see them. So, do they exist yet or no? I don't know. They're, they're, there's like they got little elves working around the clock trying to get them ready the for interns? Charlotte. They're interns. Okay, yeah, sorry. it's going to be. It's gonna <laughs> you have be to call them interns now. <laughs> <laughs> Paid Santa's interns. interns. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be good. shaped like a shoe, but just blurred out. That would be amazing if they were like the Woody Allen shoes. I just what, think what was that movie? Not Celebrity. Uh, the one where the later uh, something about where he was no. just blurry the whole time. Oh, that was really That's great. A really great one. Maybe they could just do that. Just ask the NBA to blur out Kawhi's feet, just track them and blur them out the whole All Star game. They're not ready. They're actually just Air Jordans with New Balance stitched. It was side. like Westbrook in that new uh, acne ad where he's wearing all the like '96 denim or whatever it's called, blurred out sneakers. Maybe they're gonna look like the Elizabeth Town shoes. Oh, yeah. Famous movie sneakers, like the Jumanji ones, which were just Nikes, right? Can you describe the Elizabethtown sneakers so people don't have to Google? I mean, I guess they were supposed to be really ugly because in the movie, nobody, everybody hates them, right? Yeah. They were kind of overwrought, I feel like. Is there a campaign you could run for Kawhi that's not based on negative space? Well, I mean, yeah, they just did it. It was awful. no. I'm saying, but that's okay. negative space. That's that's mm -hmm. what I mean. It's like that. It's like we're not this, that, and that. We're just basketball, or we don't need those things. Is there one you could? We're no personality, right? It's like you're. Let's lean into him not having a personality. I get that idea, but do you have to do that? Can't you like pretend that he has a personality? Or something? I know it was like it was very much like I'm not a role model, like with the the Charles Barkley one. Except it was like I'm not like my the other people who that you prefer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We're not a restaurant with service or food. <laughs> well, the thing that's great about Wyden and Kennedy is like they wouldn't, I'm guessing for someone like Kawhi, they wouldn't provide that much content. They would just be like, let's like pair him up with a really great illustrator and do like pick a really great song and just have him do stuff. They wouldn't have to be like, let's manufacture this narrative that's going to grab people's heartstrings, you know, like they would just probably show like a beautifully shot thing with a cool piece of music. How sad is Under Armour, man? Like they have Steph Curry and they can't get the attention that a bad Kawhi Leonard ad gets. I mean, there's enough musicians from Toronto just gets, I mean, outside of Drake, that doesn't work, but like, but you wouldn't you want to do Toronto. And just, you guess. wouldn't want to do Toronto, Kawhi, right? Because he just might bounce. Yeah. Like you don't want to do the, the hometown thing with Kawhi. Like what would you do with him? If you can't, well, like, let's assume like you can't do L.A., San Antonio, Texas, uh, Toronto. Why not, you, why not use the, the elements of his personality that I don't even particularly find exciting, but the, like where he lives, that he drives like a busted-ass car. His, like, why not just sort of... You can go funny, right? Go, go more funny, like that he is like this incredibly normal dude. Bagging just, groceries. Just going, yeah, 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 just, just do that. Getting his braids done. That's yeah. good. Exactly. Kawhi in the barbershop. Just yeah. normal dude Kawhi, who also just happens yeah. to be you know, a top 10, top 7, yeah. top 5 player. Or we, we could just uh, represent him as our favorite, a cartoon dog with that laugh. He's got the laugh tailor-made. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I would do something like that, right? But... God, there's like there's so few people in this advertising world that are good, and like they're they're not at New Balance, right? So like <laughs> that would be an amazing ad, but I mean I don't even say that to you want Kawhi as Pucci sent back to his home planet. If you if you tasked a couple companies with like okay we have this idea of him and a laughing dog, he reminds us of this laughing dog. Can you make this funny? Like a handful of people could, and a handful of people certainly couldn't. And I'm not trying to trying to throw shade at. New Balance, because I, I do like... 
I like their shoes. I I was up all night trying to figure out what my next pair of shoes would be. There's a pair of Hoka's right out there for you to wear. They're not for me, man. I respect those shoes, and they fit me well. I, they're just not for me. I like they were just lightweight, sponsored by Hoka. <laughs> hey, man, send me some shit. I like the hiking boots. Convex or concave. Yeah. Don't care. I don't care. Doesn't even matter. Just depends which way you look at it. <laughs> all right. Let's talk some hoops, guys. <laughs> well, N- Noah, you're a Wizards fan, so, mm-hmm. you know... Condolences Unfortunately, on that. thank you. Um, you guys are what, 24 and 34? Something like that. The perfect place where <laughs> you're... We've all stopped paying no, attention. It's, it's really the sweet spot where you're bad enough to not come close to the playoffs, but also not nearly bad enough to have good odds of the top pick. Really yeah. the, the, the prime selection there. Yeah, although the second half of the season, we could get down to the, the seller, I think, pretty, <laughs> pretty quickly. What, the number seven seed has like a, a 7% chance at number one? Something like that. And then a, a that's, solid that's, chance. That's not bad considering not number, bad one's just got, number one's got 14. You can be yeah. six places worse and have not, half as many chances. Was it like odds are real. One through three has 14% odds, is that right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it goes down to 12. And it's crucial to have one because you're guaranteed a top four, but whatever. But the, like the, the Lakers and Wizards could get a nice pick if they decide not to win games. The problem with this season is that there are some teams that are just so fucking bad Mm -hmm. that even saying, all right, let's tank it out, you're like, man, we can't pick up ground on the Knicks. We can't pick up ground on the Hawks. We can't pick up ground on the Bulls. The top four are locked, but the the five, six, seven are up for grabs. Or maybe, I'm sorry, maybe not the Bulls, but uh, who else is? Oh, the The Bulls are The Hawks kind of play hard, though. Yeah. I almost feel like they're not doing the best job of tanking. Cleveland and the Knicks are are the, the real. The Hawks are pretty bad. Shameless they lost tankers the last night. Huge, crucial loss for the Hawks. <sighs> I was so frustrated last night. But back to the Wizards. Otto Porter Jr. blowing up in Chicago. What's up? He had that like <laughs> he had that crazy. Wow, you re- thirty-eight. You just, we didn't even ask about like John Wall. He just decided to kick the poor man. Well, well, that's the well, last plenty thing of bad happened. news that's to okay. go around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get chat. to Wall. We, we have time. <laughs> um, he's pretty good. I just, the contract is so bad. You know. Did you have mixed feelings about that trade, or were you no. just like, "All right, let's keep it moving"? Yeah, I was. I was good with that. Kelly Oubre, I was sad about. I wanted to hang on to him just because of his swag. Yeah, he's just an entertaining he's guy. Too wavy. Yeah, he was a little too wavy for DC. Oh, that's isn't that what Joakim Noah said when he left New York? He was like, ah, "Dude, I'm I'm still pretty much a party animal, and I had to leave that situation." I mean, he's not lying. No, no. I remember seeing him at an event that I was covering. At like a huge warehouse in the naval yard. Oh right, right. And he's like, "I've definitely been here before." <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, "Not for this. You've just been frequenting this <laughs> massive like the, warehouse in the naval yard." He used to go to drum and bass raves uh, right off to games bass. before the Sunday matinee. Uh, that was a good era. So, Porter, you're fine with leaving. I'm Oubre, fine, fine with mixed feelings. I'm conflicted about holding on to Beal. On the one hand, he's Far and away the best player on the team. He's still super young. On the other hand, he's the best asset the team has. Why not trade him before the trade deadline and go all in on being really bad and catch up to those cellar dwellers really quickly? Yeah, instead they they didn't move Ariza, and then they mentioned that they were hoping to re-sign Ariza. That I did not understand. It was baffling, but that's a way to do it, right? Like, they don't have to tank in order to get good. And I agree, like, Beal, I, I tried to do a search the other day to see if Beal was, like, comparable to Michael Jordan um, at that Interesting. age. Not quite, but my, <laughs> my, my brain went, like, Beal is actually, like, a more complete player than we think. And seeing him without Wall is, like, kind of <laughs> astonishing. That was Jordan's phone because he was checking his phone. Checking stats, quo. I'm That's a stat cool. checker. That's cool. What'd you check? What'd you find? Uh, <laughs> so Michael Jordan is better than Bradley Beal. Yes. Well, it, in my mind... That's because just because of both spent all their time in the Eastern Conference. They have not... Well, one of them <laughs> has not let his team down, and then the other one has abandoned his team in the yeah, in Beale time of need. Yeah, Beal didn't quit. I've abandoned my team! <laughs> but... Uh, like, what do you do with Dwight Howard? And Yami Hime. 
I mean, those contracts don't look that bad anymore because, like, Yamahimi has one more year, I think. I mean, they only don't look bad because, like, they had Time. to run out at some point. Yes. Mm. Um, but, like, rebuilding through the draft is what, after what Philly did, everyone wants to do what Hinky did. But mm-hmm. there's another way to do it. Like, I mean, at the same time, it's like, this is what the flattened lottery odds are about, right? Yes. To say, it's not really worth it for you to get rid of Beal and just try to plunge the bottom because you might not be rewarded for that in right. a way that you were a couple of years ago. So it's like, might as well hold on to him. You could still look out and get Zion, even being the eighth. It's a long shot. Team. Thing. Right, but I mean, it's like, yeah. your odds aren't good enough for mm-hmm. or, or that it's worth like just trading Beal to like pull the plug on the season. And Beal is who you want. He's like, what, 25? Like, he's exactly kind of what you want. But he just has value. I just don't know if... if, I guess my question is more... Like, are you reconciled with this is just ruination for like three years, four years, five years? Pretty much, yeah. There's there's no way out of this. you got to pay John Wall like a third of your salary cap. You can't can't move that contract. It's impossible. Like he's owed, just call New York. He's owed up to what forty, like forty yeah. some million dollars. Like, it's, yeah. I think it's time for a hard reset. And selling Beal is basically the best you can do. Is that because then you get picks? They're not paid anything. They're not expected to do anything for three years. See I, what you got. See All what right. you got. John Wall comes back. You finish paying him, and then you kind of just you're in a better place, and you haven't wasted. Like Bradley Beal's not going to get you to. What, the fifth spot by himself with some scrubs? Not even. He's so, also but, not good enough to orchestrate an entire rebuild necessarily that's around what trading. I mean. Like, what Beal. team are you thinking? Uh, like, what team, what four teams would you ask? Uh, you'd ask LA if they wanted Beal, if they struck out. Mm-hmm. That doesn't really help you, that what they have. Uh, I don't think Boston is necessarily going to give up Tatum for Beal because they want AD. No way. Uh, and I don't know if you want Tatum or over Beal, Martel Webster, too. Um, <laughs> Or like, what if you go? If you ask the Knicks or the Suns, like, would would the Knicks give a top four pick up for Bradley Beal? Maybe, but no one's going to give you. I mean, no one's going to give up the farm for Bradley Beal. He's a good player, but he's already making twenty five million dollars a year. We kind of know what he is. He's a he's a a good two guard who can kind of be on ball. I think he's, he's awesome. A, he's an average defender. Like, he's not. A superstar. He's a very, very good offensive player. He's Clay Thompson. You know, I, I just sort of if you're. I think he's better than Clay Thompson. Maybe, yeah. but I just mean that's the. It's yeah. a good comparison. That, that's sort of the the ballpark. He's a better passer. A, I mean, Clay just doesn't pass he's ever. A, he's a better right. He's a better version of Devin Booker. I mean, but he's also. No, I disagree. You're selling him low. Like he's he's obviously not a top ten player, but after you get through the first tier of all NBA players, like Bradley Beal does a lot of everything he can rebound he can assist he's not a defender but he doesn't have to be a defender i like him but i just don't I, to me he's like a top 35 player maybe i got well what i mean i don't want to argue about top numbers right i just i'm not gonna argue 28 <laughs> <laughs> but he's i mean to me he's better than john wall to me he's he's i'd take him over clay thompson but that's probably a great comp would um, you take wall or beal healthy wall or healthy and a healthy bill. If you had to choose between one of those guys going forward. Right now? <clears throat> if both guys were healthy? Yeah. yeah what are the parameters? Yeah. Um, ages as they exist now, like 29 yeah, or 29. It's right now, except Beal has... With their contract. Has feet. I'd know. keep Beal. Oh. I hate to say it. I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of wondering, is John Wall's career over? Yeah. For a guy who, <laughs> whose game was predicated on his quickness and his speed... And his explosiveness, is he so broken now that he's just done? And I mean, coming back... He like, can't shoot. It's going to be a couple of years, really, until he's fully back from this Agreed. injury. Um, at which point, he's still got three years left on his contract. So I think he'll play again because he's going to have to. Mm-hmm. But they might even just end up... It might be too sad. They might just have to waive him. I don't, I don't have very good feelings about this injury at all. I'm just imagining... I don't either. Also, his conditioning when he took like three months off over summer, in two he years... Came back looking like D'Angelo. Yeah, yeah he, man. Was, he was not fully in shape ODB. for this season. He's gonna, but I'm glad that he's going back to college. And he was so surly. Did you watch any of those pickup games in Miami? He was so salty, but he's like kind of overweight. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, it's kind of funny. I love a fat point guy. I know you do. <laughs> Felton. Oh, everyone loves him. I just want John Wall to reach his, his destiny as a dancing bear. <laughs> but the thing is, 
when he announced that he had blown out his Achilles at home, Washington was like, you were on a skateboard, right? You were, yeah, on a, yeah. you were on a moped. Um, just to be clear, you were on a trampoline. You were your, skiing. Or like, what, just oh, really, yeah. please tell us you were doing something that would violate your contract so we can just cut you off the books. So the, and, the Luke Longley rule, right? Yeah. But He's I was, like, no, I just fell on my stairs. Like, but were you on roller skates going down the stairs? And they, He's like, no, I was trying to get out of the fucking bathtub. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm injured. And they couldn't get the exemption because it was a 12-month. Why didn't they lie about that? That's what I was curious. I asked the question on Twitter, but I couldn't Google it. Like, I couldn't find any answers. Why couldn't they just get a doctor to be like, it's a 13-month mm. recovery, or it's an 18-month recovery? Um, but this is where like fandom gets really hard, right? Because like, I remember having a conversation with you, Noah, like three years ago, being like, they should trade John Wall. Mm -hmm. This is when I was on the trade Porzingis thing, and I'm like, because I loved what Boston had. Like, I really wanted what Ainge was holding, and I was like, I think John Wall can get you two of those picks. And hindsight is whatever, but like, I think it, it's sad to see Wall go down like this, especially when he starts his contract. But like, Washington has had its ways out and has not pulled the trigger on it. They've had their chances. These. They've That's absolutely true. had their chances. And I'm proud of the Knicks for unloading Porzingis early, even though I'm kind of sad because I like him. But there was times for Washington to do this, and they didn't. They didn't. I, I blame it on Grunfeld. I think it's time for Grunfeld to go. ex Knicks legend, Grunfeld. Sorry, Ernie. I have, I, don't know, I have some sympathy for the Wizards, though, because they had the whole Arenas era where they were kind of on the come up Love and they that. viewed themselves as rivals Anton to Jameson. LeBron and like sort of the rising power in the East, and it fell apart. And it's happened again. And yeah. Right, that's kind of why I get why they didn't sell on this team. They're like, mm -hmm. look... We hit on Porter, we hit on Beal, we hit on Wall. These guys are good. None of them are a superstar, but they're good, they're young. Even Ubre was a hit. If, if, you know, but just he's, like, a, he's a player. A I mean, a couple of years ago, we were on the verge of the Eastern Conference Finals. That's what yeah. I mean. You, you looked that at that team. That was only a couple of years ago. And you're like, we're, we're right there with Boston. LeBron's going to get old or he leaves or whatever, but we're right here. They were one guy away. They had their, you know, they, they had their year when they thought maybe they would get Kevin Durant. Like, I understand why they didn't say... Fuck it, tear oh, it all course, down. Course, like yeah. they, they were in a position where like a few different breaks or a, just getting lucky or something. Maybe they are a team that goes to the finals. But it's but, funny. But last year you could kind of read the tea leaves. I feel like. Yeah, and it's funny you didn't even mention Otto Porter Jr., who was their highest paid player before the Wall contract. Like that was their error, right? And we talk about this a lot on the show. Like they are the definition of NBA purgatory. But by not even. Like, Otto Porter Jr. doesn't even come to, to mind with all these the, the, in the recent history. And he was, like, he was getting a lot of the I cap. mean, I, was, I, was, I mentioned him. I mean, I thought, they, I thought that was a hit. They had to pay him. I mean, that's, but that's kind of the situation they were in where you're like, we're good enough that we can't let this dude walk. Mm -hmm. And we also know that he's not a superstar. But he's 23, so hopefully he'll turn into, like, a better player than he is. Right. And, then, and like, that was, like, the gamble. But the, yeah. the, the reaction you have when you have those assets, like three of those assets in the draft that mature, is like, okay, we either let Otto Porter Jr. walk or we pay him. At that point, you turn to your other older assets who are about to get paid, and you move them before Otto Porter. So their chance was to move John Wall. At his peak, coming off of that weird slam dunk competition that didn't work. But then it's like we're talking about saying... You're a team that wants to become a contender. Trade your best player at his peak value. And they're like, why would we do that? Because this is what happens. But you don't know that. But this is a, a, a huge possibility. <laughs> but I mean, to me, Jesus it was like Christ. he got that injury and he, and he just, just was not the same player. Agreed. And like to be like, we, we could have thought that he would get hurt and then not be good. And then we'd have this terrible contract. You're like, well, we thought John Wall was going to be a top 10 player. Mm -hmm. And, and they did, for sure. That's what I mean. They, they're like, cool, this is our dude. We have our, our franchise. I mean, they have so many weaknesses as a front office that it just all kind of came together. They can't evaluate. They're bad at money. They can't evaluate talent, but they're good at drafting. So it's just like all these things, all the worst things happen. Like the John Wall situation is just bad luck. And there's like no way to kind of like go back in time and make that better. But when he signed that contract... I think we all were just like, we can just write up this team off until that contract's over. Mm -hmm. Well, a team that's... I was well, going to... What do you got, Jordan? DC basketball, right? It's about to get very exciting. 
because of Kevin Durant's new TV show about growing up playing high school basketball in the DC area. On ESPN Plus, that one you're talking about? No, I believe it's like CBS or something. It's like a real show. Hey, do, you, do you know about this? No, I know about the one where he talks business. Like, yeah, on, there's no, two this is, this is a This is a dramatic uh, oh. narrative TV Scripted. show. Scripted. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. And it's called Swagger hmm. because, hmm. you know, Durant's just dripping in it. But uh, would you be excited for Swaggy a... Swaggy D is what they call him. Swaggy D? Yeah. Yeah. He's just drowning in drip. <laughs> drowning in drip. Uh, would you be excited I would watch for... It. Yeah. yeah, for sure. But it's set in the, it's set the in DC, DC area. Yes, set in the DC area. So uh, PG you, County. Yeah, you mm-hmm. might be seeing some of your old, old haunts. basketball haunts. Auto bar. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any Walt Williams stories? Uh, no. Walt the Wizard. <laughs> Big socks. Big, yeah, I like that's, the high that's socks. All I <laughs> I'm a sucker for a guy in high socks. Okay, quickly, top five wizards of all time, according to Panda Bear. Uh, John Walls at the top. Woo! Yeah. Uh, Chris Webber, uh, Gilbert Arenas, Gugliata. Oh, oh, that's a good one. And no Anton Jameson love. West Wes Unsold. Unsold. You gotta Whoa. gotta throw the the legend in. When, when were they closest to a championship? Was that Arenas? Yeah, Harvey Grant. Mm. He was pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Liddell Eagles. Is that how you pronounce Eccles. his last name? Eccles, Eccles. Eccles. Yeah. That's a really good name. Bernard King was a bullet, right? He was. Yeah. Oh, um, I mean, this is the worst kind of radio possible, just listing off names. <laughs> but uh, but Adams, whatever his name was, little dude. Michael Adams. Michael Adams. Yeah, he had some, he had some time for the bullets. Okay. Anyway, engrossing radio. Y- yeah. Moving on to a team that's much more successful, the New York Knicks. Oh, amazing. So the Knicks are in the... Throws of a 18 game losing streak. Snapped it last night, baby. Mm-hmm. And won. we've seen the New York media or s- members of it or New York fans are now wondering: Are the Knicks too bad? <laughs> What's going on here, Quo? What are, what are we seeing? What, Why? I, in the Knicks are finally tanking, but now people are mad about it. What's happening? It reminds me of the friend we all have who is perpetually single, and they're like, "We just want like a nice person who like." Uh, is like we oh, don't. Jordan is giving you the squint. Of Wait, death why is Jordan over mad? I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about anyone in the room. Hmm. But we all know this person who's like, I just want like a nice person who has a good job, and they don't have to be like the prettiest person in the room or the most handsome person in the room. And then you show them a nice person, and then they're like, they're not handsome enough. Why are you staring at me, Ben? You, got to, you haven't had a <laughs> girlfriend in like six years. I thought you were talking about him. Now that you go no. on, you're all like better than me. I don't think I'm better than you. I think Quo is calling you out. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? So like, we never get a good draft pick. They start losing games. Like, well, I don't know if this losing culture is going to jive with the draft. I don't think we deserve a good draft pick. I'm like, we got to make sure what we want. And with, even with the flattened odds, we're doing the right thing. This season's going to be ugly, and it's ugly already. And it's going to finish in hopefully a top three pick. But the New York media is reverting back to like its old tricks, right? Which is like losing culture never succeeds. I'm just shocked that people in New York still care about wins. Oh, they care so much, man. It's like been a thing during this 18-game slide. I've never really understood adults caring about wins and losses. This is kind of what I'm saying. I just, I just don't get it. But people are like, oh, but they're losing so much. Like, why do you fucking care? Like, who cares? If you're watching young players, it's fun. Like, the, the end result of the game is so disconnected from what is happening on the floor or what the team is trying to accomplish. Like, I just don't understand but this idea that losing is hard for fans. I'm like... That's it, generational, though. That's it, a generational idea. It was way more fun watching the process Sixers than when they were slightly better a couple of years later. A lot of people would disagree with you on that. I, I agree with you on that. But I think a lot of people, especially the generation before us, really value like culture and wins and playing hard and all that. And then like I think we, even though we're old dogs, we skew towards millennial a little bit where we're just like, oh, this effort doesn't really affect how I feel about this player. But it's more that the idea of like a team culture is just also removed from wins and losses because 
like Kobe and Shaq won championships and despised each other. Jordan was like, and Pippen and those guys were pun. You know, Jordan was like punching teammates in the face, and and they were like winning six championships. Like the idea of team culture is just non-existent. You know, like I don't know whether the Knicks get along or not, but I mean, their win-loss record doesn't. We're with play into you, that. but I think like eighty percent of the sports fan base would disagree. Like, I wonder if it's just people attach their identity to the team. So when the team loses, they feel like they've lost, and losing isn't fun. Just doesn't feel good. Right, I think... Like, people can't detach from the team and just sort of be objective about what's going on. I think there's some of that, but there's also an odd morality that we put with sports between winning and losing, Mm. where winning in those situations where it was a toxic environment or whatever, and these guys didn't get along, you know, the, the 86 Mets, just doing drugs everywhere, wilding out, but they won, so it was like, they're good. Like, winning is a virtuous thing, and losing is the opposite. So if your team is bad, it's like, man, the culture is bad. It's morally a failure. Mm. You're, You're ethically compromised when you lose, or you don't care about losing if it doesn't bother you. And that's kind of what it is to somewhat. People are like, I'm offended well, maybe, that maybe, the Knicks have lost 18 games in a row. Maybe people still care about wins in sports because it's the last form of entertainment that uh, isn't disposable. You know what I mean? Like, So you have songs or music and you can stream it whenever you want and you can like listen to this, you can cherry pick your things. At TV shows, you can uh, binge half a season and... Just move it, on to the just next move thing. on to the next thing. You can't do that at all in sports. You're still like based around like calendar structures and and how it works. So like the stakes are still but, there, and and they're collective stakes as well because everybody has to invest the same way. You can't personalize as much your viewing experience of a sports team. Are are you sure? Because I I know what you mean, but like. Uh, quite literally, you can turn the page on a game easier than you can. Oh no, I'm I'm, I'm talking like like it's it, it's happening in real time and it and it morphs throughout the season. Mm-hmm. So you have to sort of still engage. You have to engage in that arc. Well, it's not predetermined. I don't mean. Yeah, it's like you're watching it in real time unfold, and the results are based on what occurs versus it being. Scripted is that is that kind of what you mean? Is like that there's like an you know uncertainty I mean. to it. Yeah, or it's just it's just it's not as fickle as other forms of entertainment have become. And so I think because it's not as fickle, people remain invested in this more so than well, it's, we it's, might. It's one of the last binary things we have, right? Wins and losses is kind of the only thing we can't debate. Um, and I think like it's interesting to see how sports opinions and fandom have morphed because like some things are true in the way people think collectively and some things aren't but what i think is really happening is a management versus worker kind of vibe in the world and when we talk about effort we're, we're kind of on the down low talking about that um like we don't like dwight howard because he smiles and doesn't win championships i'm like well what's that it's just like well that's not a proper way to work it's um, the criticism of lebron too yeah right? Totally, like he hasn't won enough. He's not a killer. Like yes, he can't be the greatest of all time. And, and that he, even he's predates, not trying to murder people. Yeah. <laughs> and that predates our own generation. Like people said that about Bill Russell versus Wilt Chamberlain. Are you but, talking about the slower Stromile Swift? Literally, Stromile <laughs> Swift, <laughs> Bill Russell. Um, yeah, just as a quick, a quick tangent. I was just bored and watching clips from like the nineteen fifties. <laughs> Holy so shit. Bored. Holy shit. It's like, like you don't like jazz? It's like our like team that we had on the Wednesday night pickup run would have just washed the Knicks. I mean Dude, those teams would crush the Warriors now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean like but I mean our our pickup run team would have murdered the professional show basketball me, players. Show me the eight rings that Tommy Heinsohn has <laughs> that you don't have. I mean, like, so this was clips from 1950s. Dudes are taking foul shots with like one, like a flamingo stance with one leg in the air and one hand shots. They're doing these wild hooks. No one can dribble. And Bill Russell joined the NBA like five years after that. You're like, wait, wait, he was playing with these dudes? 
no lie, worse than high school quality basketball. I don't want to hear anything about Bill Russell being it's the greatest player of all time. It's where people just dribble with one hand, right? Yeah. One hand, but I mean, the in shooting, circles. shooting form, it's like they're like throwing chest passes at the rim. Like, it's just not recognizable basketball. It's like a dance. It's just like, just throw it up with rhythm, and then some of them will go in and some of them won't. It was like, you watch it, and if someone's like, these are dudes from Romania who have heard of this game of basketball and are trying to sort it out for themselves. Why'd it have to be from Romania? I'm saying Eastern Europe. Yeah, I know you're always... War. <sighs> xenophobe. So Fine. I was inspired Australia. by... Thank you. Okay. I was inspired that vi- by that video and went back and watched the Allen Houston game where he eliminated the Heat because um, it was like the, the anniversary of that a few days ago. So I watched that game on YouTube. That is also trash basketball. It was, it was, the final score was like 81-79 or something. It was the worst <laughs> viewing experience. Do you People falling th- down under the rim. The, the Bulls against the, uh, the Lakers in the finals. Oh. You're watching, you're just like, what were we romanticizing about these dudes again? Like, they can't dribble, well, they can't shoot. What, the 91 finals? But that, you're was, wa- that was great. It was. I've but watched you- that again recently. It's great. Mm. It's like guys allowing, dude just dribbling 15 feet from the basket and not taking shots because no one can shoot. Defense is kind of like, I dare you to shoot this. And then watching the ball go up, like, see, you missed it. Bunch of bombs. You guys are crazy. But you can absolutely compare eras. I guess that's like what I got to thinking about because like we have like BPM and all these statistics to try to like uh, get rid of the noise of uh, styles of play of, you know, like biometrics, health, all this stuff. But then when you watch games like, oh, you can compare these errors. That was a bad era of basketball. Like what we're watching now, obviously we talk about this all the time. It's like the best version I've ever seen of this game. Speaking of the bad eras, one of my uh, buddies, a friend of the pod, Jason Johnson, who's uh on Twitter as Frazier approves was mentioned the fact that the great show. <laughs> Chelsea Grammer. Did you make this friend because of his handle since you're such a fanboy of no, Frazier? No, I've it's known just him. coincidence. No, I've known him for a long time. And he's also talking about Walt Frazier. Oh. Who is quote's least favorite jersey. Least favorite jerseys. All right, Noah. So on the last cookies, I said the worst look of all time in the history of looks. Not even basketball is a throwback Walt Frazier jersey. Mm. Okay. Is there, a, <laughs> is there a look worse than that? Uh, like we're I'll talking, be able to come up with something. Like hats, I gotta like be fedoras. able to beat that. Oh, a Westbrook Thunder jersey. Not still better than Walt Frazier throwback. Like if you just saw, if you were just wandering around Lisbon. And you were just checking out the sites, or I, were not. I'd be intrigued if I saw somebody with that look in Lisbon. Oh, intrigue is different. Like, I'm very intrigued. All right, quote. Okay. okay, got one. I'm holding up in my left hand a Walt Frazier jersey, and in the other hand, a deep V scoop neck t shirt. <laughs> you have to wear one of them That's in tough. public. That's very tough. Yeah, I know it is. Tom Chambers <laughs> jazz jersey. That's kind of sweet, no? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Are we, are we seeing your uh, little chest? Or are we seeing your arms or your chest? I would go V neck. It's deep though. It's like, no, a, it's, like it's like it's like Australian deep V. Australian oh. deep V. Shutter shades. McCarran pool. <laughs> <laughs> Let's oh, go. Oh. I have a Dave DeBusher jersey. Ooh, Ooh that's a bad look. <laughs> Nick's. Yeah. Whoa. Um, did you receive it as a gift? I did. Was the gift from someone who uh, enjoyed his era of basketball? No. We, playing in high school, my friend Mike and I, one of the fathers of a younger kid at the school would just kind of started showing up at the gym after we would play after school every day. And uh, he started playing with us, and he was really physical and intense. And for some reason, we started calling him DeBusher. <laughs> I can't remember exactly why, but we were obsessed with DeBusher for some reason. All right, now that jersey is totally understandable. So that's where that comes blue from. Collar, blue collar, blue collar gift. And so my aunt who lives here in New York was always hearing me talk about DeBusher and uh, must have known him as, as a player for the Knicks back in the 70s. And that Christmas there was my DeBusher so In jersey. fact, it's a charming story and I feel like a fool. <laughs> but the, the idea, the Frazier thing though, was that, <laughs> was, that, was that Jordan benefited from expansion. Yeah. And that's something that we don't really talk about. Not only do they move the three point line, that's in, my kicker. But expansion. Yeah. You added like 20% more players to the, the NBA 
who or whatever it was over the course of several years of guys who would not have been in the NBA. And Jordan was on a stacked team in that era. I mean, are we, are we trying to diminish the greatness of Michael Jordan? Always. Yeah, always. Constantly. It's, it's, it's the cookies this pretty ethos. harsh too. That's what this show is for. Okay, so LeBron is already better than Michael Jordan. Is there another player you can think of that would push Jordan down to three? Oh, this is a good one. Uh, Shaq? Spicy. David Robinson? Tim Duncan? You can get out of here with all of them. Um, Why? Why, though? Because I said so. Uh, I could see right. Tim well, Duncan, see? Duncan being <laughs> right? a popular argument. A Duncan, a, a Shaq to me is an interesting one. Um, this Kobe, <laughs> <Just> like, the, <laughs> like the, the most obnoxious possibility is definitely Kobe. Realistically, maybe Chris Paul. You take a close look at that. Dave DeBush, <laughs> Walt Frazier, <laughs> yes, Steph okay. Curry, mm. James Harden. Offensively, yes. Harden's so good. So good, man. Unethical. Isn't it funny that he's so good at offense and his game is offensive? Good one, Jordan. Yeah, thank you. You've been <laughs> sitting on that for months. I mean months. sitting on shit, Ben. You <laughs> shut your mouth. <laughs> he has this written on his arm in permanent ink. That's an offensive foul. It's like a double kind of meaning. So take us through the, like a kind of behind the scenes of the creation of, of that joke. No. <laughs> <laughs> As told to. What? Like, 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 when did this... Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, Knicks fans losing their mind. Losing their mind, but it's, it's difficult. So I don't... I don't it's, it's understandable. Losing 18 in a, row, in a row is like heartbreaking if you don't watch Sacramento Kings games. If you just like watch the Knicks and you lose every night, it's disappointing for sure. Like, especially for people who think there is winning culture or for, like, kids. Like, I've gone to the garden and people are really upset. To me, it's, an, it's weird because people have now sort of embraced this conventional wisdom that tanking is a good thing. And that's not even a, a weird, edgy thing. It's like, yeah. we all understand that. Almost to the point where it's probably too, under, too accepted as, like, what you're supposed to do. Just pull uh-huh. the plug, tank, tank, tank. Like, everyone sort of just yeah. thinks that. Mm-hmm. Kind so, of true. But, uh, right, but that's why the, the league changed the odds a bit. But whatever the case, so Knicks fans are like, okay, we're watching them tank. They traded for cap space. They're playing young guys. No, they're doing this wrong. Like, what? that's what is weird to me. It's really weird. Is that conventional wisdom is that you're supposed to tank. You're supposed to play young guys. This is not Hinky's process being redone. This is the very conventional Yes. Way of doing things: lose draft picks. This play is how some the Spurs got Tim Duncan. It's this like, has been done. It's the, it's a little bit bewildering to see Knicks fans be like, yeah. "But they're too bad." But I can get with Knicks fans because either do it all or don't do it at all. Because now DeAndre Jordan won them a game that could swing their entire odds. Like, why are they paying, playing DeAndre Jordan now? It's inexplicable. He's a good player. Does anyone here like Dennis Smith Jr.? Does anyone think he is like a part of the Knicks' future? You know how I feel about him, but I'll ride for him if, if, if I can defend him. He's still young. <laughs> Youth is really important here. Um, I think he has value, but not in the role in which he's operating at. He might not be like a primary point guard. He might work better off the ball. Mm. And they don't really have a primary point guard right now because Frank isn't really doing it. But like Dennis Smith Jr. has a value not only in his age and contract, but his skill set is also kind of hard to find. He's not good at it yet. Like, he's a worse player in New York than he, than he has been in Dallas this year. But he's also better than he was last year. Do you, well, How do you feel about, is he worse because he's surrounded by even worse players? No, I think he has problems with his game. I think, uh, where I, I would love a player like Lonzo Ball, who seems like and Ben Simmons, the genius, can see the court forming before it happens and runs through lanes and and creates shots dennis smith jr has none of that i agree he's kind of he's not even the westbrookian in the way of you westbrook know, is good at that westbrook is westbrook creates way more assist yeah. opportunities than anyone in the league like it's not even close so like, like for, soccer assists too and hockey I'm, assists i mean but it's like he leads the league by assists a lot 
potential assists, he kills everybody. Westbrook is, for all of his faults and poor shot selection, he's great at that. And the only reason we compare, compare those guys is because they have bad shooting. <laughs> like bad shooters who are right. freakish athletes. Yeah. Mm. And I kind of remember in the preseason watching him and Doncic play for the first time, and there was kind of when they're still sorting out who's kind of going to be on ball for that team, and, and people were excited about seeing them as a tandem potentially. And seeing a play where in sort of transition and uh, Smith pushed the ball up there and like missed Donchick for like a second and a half and then found him and Donchick hit a three and people were like, these guys are going to be incredible together. I'm like, he missed a wide open dude for a, a second and a half, which is like, you don't do that. That's, that's like something that you wouldn't do in high school if you have that intuition. Like you can train him to like find where people are going to be open, but he might just not have that that sort of basketball acumen that makes you a, a guy like Lonzo Ball. Which is a rare skill, and a lot of players and point guards don't have that, but they have other things going on. But he doesn't have those other things. Like, he can't create a shot that well. He doesn't manufacture good looks for himself. Uh, he's he's kind of small, and that's important. But he likes the defense to settle, and then he runs a play, which is a way to do it. It's just doesn't really, like... Use his athleticism to his advantage. He's a bad player. <laughs> that was the defense of Dennis Smith Jr. That's the best I could do, <laughs> that he might get better. Fair enough. And in other basketball news here, we have the controversy kind of brewing in New Orleans. Another post-deadline fiasco, similar to what's happening in New York, where Anthony Davis had tried to force his way to the, or his management had tried to force his way out of New Orleans and over to the Lakers. It didn't work out, so he's stuck on the team in a bit of a lame duck situation where people assume that he'll be traded this offseason. As a result, the Pelicans wanted to bench him. They are like, well, we don't want you to get hurt because we're going to trade you. And also, you know, like, screw off. You don't want to be here. Let's just keep it rolling, and we're going to now pull the plug on the season or do whatever we want to do. Mm-hmm. He's like, I want to play. And the league said, no, he's going to play, or we're going to find you like $100,000 a game or whatever. Panda bear. What's going to happen here? Are we just going to go through the motions of this, this facade for the next two months? I assume so. I mean, it, <laughs> he's going to get to the Lakers one way or another. Uh, I don't see any other scenario uh, being possible. So... I guess he sits the rest of the season. I mean, so last game he played the first half. Then there was like an injury of sorts, shoulder, a contusion. shoulder contusion, and he just like bailed and like wasn't even out there. He left the arena. Yeah, he was like, "We it's just the passing of the mantle. We're gonna let Jaleel Okafor take over where I left off. Continue this excellent. The new season. Stat Hog. That's right. That is. It's very strange. Stat Hog Junior. <laughs> it's very strange behavior to leave the arena before the game is over with your agent who's orchestrated this whole fiasco. That's kind of what I it mean. Is this, even, is this even tenable? Like, how does this... Where, where's the, the neutral buoyancy here of, like... He's under contract for another not, year. A, a year and a half. <laughs> it's like... Or, right. But, the rest of this year. But that's something, how can this I, get sorted? Well, also, I know that people feel a little bad for New Orleans because they're like, we want to bench our asset and we should be allowed to do so since he's asked for a trade. No, I don't agree. You had two weeks in which to trade him if you really felt that strongly about trading your asset. There's a d- the deadline exists for a reason. You know what I mean? Like it's not like they didn't well, have an you... opportunity. It's not like he said this but after the trade for deadline. Boston, right? Like Boston. That's fine. They can wait, but they can wait and play him in the meantime or, if he's healthy. But it's sort of like the the injury evaluation we were talking about with Wall. They came out and said they might not play him, but couldn't they have just been like, uh, he has a sore knee. So he's he's going to be on a restriction, and you'd be like, "That's the same thing." And they're like, "We know it's the same thing. It's all semantics, right?" Sure, but I'm I'm sure there is some rule in the NBA where if they don't think that you're acting in good faith, that they can then bring in their own doctors to. I don't know if there's a good faith assess. Rule. Is there one? I have no idea, but that that would be a weird. But, but that's also the they union. they will launch investigations and stuff. Yeah. We've seen that the league do that. What I don't understand about the Boston thing, because the Pelicans didn't trade up to the Lakers thinking maybe in the summer they can get a better deal from somebody like Boston, right? 
can't he just once that once those talks start going, can't he just tell the Celtics I'm not going to resign with you guys? It's literally and that what deal he falls said. through. Ainge Ainge said he he doesn't care about what AD says and he's still going to go all in for him and then when he's in Boston he's going to hope for a Paul George scenario where he's just like everything you want is here so he's willing to take that chance but also kudos to Ainge because he's not giving up that much <laughs> like Jason Tatum Jalen Brown and some picks and Marcus Smart huge but but kind of worth the it. risk yeah I agree yeah this has also raised a lot of hackles for, for people who are Annoyed by the rise of LeBron and clutch and, and player agency to a degree. Fire fest. <laughs> and the the concept that players are too strong and that this Davis thing is, is kind of a blight on the game in that regard. I'm sort of like with Jordan on this. Like, come on, man. Dudes ask for trades. And I know this was public and it was like kind of excruciating for the Pelicans and nothing happened. But like, he's on your team. You go out there and play. Like, the... We're going to bench him. No, just... We've always disagreed about this because I, I wanted the Knicks just to, like, bench Porzingis and not play him until they got another good player. Like, it's hard to watch as a fan, but, like, our memories are so bad that we just won't remember this. Like, we're mad in the moment, but it makes sense because why would you devalue your asset ever? But isn't there something to be said for getting experience and playing time to kind of learn certain things? I don't think so, because there's enough examples where players get worse, like Andrew Wiggins, than get better. Dennis Smith Jr. might be getting worse, and he's been playing more. Like, I don't think players automatically get better through experience. Not automatically, but I think the possibility is there. I mean, I look at somebody like Kawhi, who got better and better to the point where he became one of the top, I don't know, five players in the league. I mean, he's awesome. Um, and AD is awesome, but he, he really has nothing to prove anymore. Like, he could brick every single shot from the rest of the season, and people are going to clamor for him, right? Mm, I guess sure. to me it's also, well, look, if you don't want to play him for the rest of the year, then you should have traded him to the Lakers. That's what I'm saying. And if you're not going to trade him to the Lakers... No, because there's a better have... deal out there. We just went through this. But I'm, he's not that's injured. That's not the point. The point is, then you play him. No, you don't have to do anything. He's your property. But see, that's why I just can't like rock with that. To be like, well, you wanted to be traded, we couldn't come up with a deal, so you're not gonna play. Like it doesn't make sense. But uh, so you're not into the process then. That's not the process at all. Right, but you you care about winning now. No. But, but why does he want to play? I'd be stoked. Two months, two extra months off. But I'm not why saying not? that's nothing to do with protecting winning. his own country. Why would you? Why would you play your best player with it's in your interest everywhere across the board, draft wise, health wise, value in the trade this summer? Why would you devalue all those things by playing one guy? Then, and and then the guy gets tra- hurt just, so often. Then just, yeah. but I'm saying, then just trade him. No, because there was a better deal that's going to happen. Like there's going to be a, a, then, a then bigger market. No, you're you're not. Oh, I, 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 I know what I'm saying. I, here. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. saying I totally understand it. My point is that if you've got Anthony Davis on your team and you're like, okay, <laughs> we're not going to do the trade right now, then play him like normal. No, and, no, you sit him. Hell no. I, I, I hate that shit. So you believe in winning culture now? Not at all. It you, has you, literally nothing to do with wins. It has nothing to do with culture. I just don't think you should bench players who are healthy for any reason if they are like... That's cultural though. No. It has nothing to do with culture. It's like... It's that upstate life culture. No, no it's, just, it's just like you don't bench good players. You absolutely bench good players. But you don't, and no one does. That's why this is fucked up. And that's what do you why. mean Nick's, no one does? Nick's and Ennis Cantor. Yeah, this happens mm-hmm. all the time. But Cantor's yeah. not good. Mm-hmm. Oh, we just, and they bought him out. Yeah, but he was good, good, he was good enough he was to good get enough five on that team, yeah. But he's certainly not good enough to the point where he's this super valuable asset on your team. But the Pelicans have come out and said they're going to limit AD. Like, that's literally what's happening. Well, I know this. I'm saying with Cantor, they just couldn't get rid of him until the deadline, then they bought him out. Uh, I love the Knicks this year up until playing DeAndre Jordan, which is really weird. But they benched their best players all season. And those players aren't good. Obviously, they're not going anywhere, but they could beat Atlanta. Who? And what players? What good players did they bench? Hardaway and Cantor Hardaway could beat played? the worst. No, they benched them, man. They, they took those guys off the court. He Hardaway had, like, was fake starting. injuries. Dude, they took them off the court. Is LeBron... And Clutch Sports playing 3D chess now. Are they trying to devalue Anthony Davis's standing as being like a good guy in the league 
So other teams will maybe not offer as much than the Lakers will. Do you know what I mean? Because so at this point, people start to think that Anthony Davis is a dick, that he's like under Clutch's control <clears throat> and, and they'll believe him when he says, I'm not going to re-sign there. And so people will be less inclined to sell the farm to buy Anthony Davis. And their offers will be smaller than the ones that the Lakers, who know they will definitely get him, will, will offer. Like, is he kind of adopting this bad yeah, guy yeah, yeah. persona? No. Well, are they just going to pretend that he's hurt now? I mean, is that kind of what you're, is that what you're saying? Is that they just going to Well, well like, that, or they're just going to be like chipping away at these little things to make him I seem a little bit kawaii, and kawaii sketchy thing. It's weird that Anthony yeah. Davis has almost taken no sort of negative, like very few arrows in this situation have been like but aimed they, at him. They're, they're almost coming. all at LeBron. Wait, and they're almost they're all at his management. They're, they're, they're coming, and that's what I mean. I think it's, it's been happening it's intentional. for a month. Wait, what are you talking about? He's been getting so much criticism. Kind of though, but it's like it, like he's also viewed as being like manipulated by like by like Clutch and LeBron, like that he's sort of an unwitting participant in this situation. He got booed, but then like people sort of like cheered later. Yeah, I think that was until last night. I mean, there's been a lot of last night was a turning yeah, I point. Th- I, like I get, agree. like, like I getting getting in the whip point. with Rich Paul was a real like double fingers, like kick the door open, double fingers to everyone, like and you and you and you. I just did that so I could give the finger to everyone. I like here. <laughs> yeah. But is he mad about he wanted to play and they want him not to play. So what's he, no, what is he, him? he also expressed that he didn't want to play that much, I think. Like both parties were just like, This is a weird situation and he was just like, Yeah, I guess I, I think he said he wanted to play knowing that there's no way in the world they were gonna play him. Then he's you know This is actually kind of a the good clear guy. situation that we're making too complicated. Like He's a valuable asset. They don't want to damage that asset. He doesn't want to either. Like that's exactly what's happening, and they want to soften it for like fan their fan base. It's super simple. What's happening? I mean, it strikes me as weird if he doesn't want to play though. Why? I know, but this is one of th- we've argued about this forever. I love this argument. Do you mean forever? Like on the show today for the last thirty minutes? The last forever, thirty years, eternally. Like I thought the Knicks should sit Porzingis. That was insane. Um, I'm not, not going to engage your nonsense <laughs> and your madness again. No, but I think Anthony Davis does want to play. He's like a, Except he's a basketball player. he didn't player. last night. Well, yeah, but that's, but that's why I'm saying it's this a turning point kind of to Jordan's idea is that I think he did want to play. I think he was like, all right, let's go back to business as usual. I'll so go back he, to dominating the league and I'll play in the all-star game. So and he didn't want to leave the arena early last night. I'm saying I think it may have changed. I don't think when he's like, yeah, I'll play like 15 minutes a game. I think he thought things were going to go back to normal. and he would They just, started him. Yeah. And then he bricked shots, got hurt, and left. Alvin Gentry seemed pretty frustrated. But you're talking about that. last night. After yeah. The yeah. Game. Right. I know, but we're all on the same page here. I'm saying prior to that, I think he did want to play. And then when he realized that they're not going to give him real minutes, but did now it's different. To be fair, did he just leave the arena so he could get a head start on partying in Charlotte? Like he doesn't have, he's not reporting back to the team. He's like, fuck this. I got four days off. What's it? I'm going to go meet up with LeBron. No, no. Have you played Charlotte? What do you mean? Have you performed in Charlotte? You... I don't think so. Is Charlotte most famous for the hoops, but also barbecue? Are there, is there like a music scene going on there? North Carolina barbecue? That's renowned, That's right? Yeah. Um, is there like, are there venues and bands from Charlotte? Except Good Charlotte. Oh, or not from Charlotte. Uh, P.D. Pablo. No. Really? I don't know. North Carolina. He seems, I mean, I'm trying to think who's a Carol, Jake Cole. Is he from? Oh, from he is. Matt he area? is. Ninth Wonder is from Carolina somewhere. Oh, yeah. The little, little brother. Yeah. Fonte. <laughs> I just so, like to think that Anthony Davis and LeBron are meeting up for one of Steve Albini's card games that he's holding in a convention center at a Best Western. That was That's amazing. where they went. That was an amazing story. Uh, Texas Hold'em, right? I believe so. I've never been to an all-star game that was outside of New York, so I don't really know how it worked in those like kind of smaller cities that are mm-hmm. just kind of overrun with NBA players and fans and media it's probably really awesome if you're a basketball fan it's sort of this 
a town based on basketball versus in New York where it's still other things going on and always is timed with fashion week. So there's like a bunch of stuff happening anyway, but like Charlotte's probably an awesome place for an all-star game. I agree, but I don't know anything about that city, man. No, me neither. (laughs) But so do they have like pop-up clubs? Like, do they, like, get warehouses, and does Nike, like, throw, like, a huge party where yeah. half the team comes through? Let's the, just go. Just I know, I want to go. Pick it up and head down. I mean, we could just Anthony Davis this show <laughs> right <laughs> fucking now. Rich Paul, pull up. Well, but we have to talk about the Sixers. Oh, fuck. Well, hold on, I was going to say. Crying out loud. Oh, the big, <laughs> but the biggest, the biggest all-star parties. Jordan brand party. There's always a huge one. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and it's in Charlotte, so it's going to be a epic, fucking bang, epic, epic blowout. And the banger, the New Balance party. <laughs> Travis Scott's <laughs> going to be everything. The Travis Nike Scott's party Travis. isn't. <laughs> but the Jordan one brand. <laughs> <laughs> the Jordan brand will be like big performers. I'll have like Drake perform. That's like the big and one. Travis Scott. Travis Scott. Well, he performs at every party. Especially yeah, he has for Jordan, Jordan shoes, yeah. We were talking the other day about, remember we are just hanging out, Travis Scott was like popping up at like random parties all the time. All the time. All the time. And we thought it was going to be like, oh cool, here's this local guy. Like ASAP Rocky. Pushing, yeah. Or like Theophilus London or something. No, he 100% was in that vein. It'd be like, Milk Studios, Christmas party, Travis Scott. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Headphones that, by Bose with a performance by a special guest. You're like, I know who that is. It's <laughs> Travis. And then he turns into, like, the biggest star in the country. Still don't know what his voice actually sounds like. Oh, that's interesting. Neither do I. I never even thought about it. I thought that was his voice. I just, but I don't know what it sounds like. Is like it? him talking? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. What's up, guys? <laughs> and then GQ. He sounds like Tim Duncan. Great. Oh, yeah. Wait, GQ's doing uh, North Carolina? I, I mean, don't know, but they generally have a big all-star party, the GQ party. Shout out to Will Welsh. Will Welsh, Cookie's, Cookie's guest. Now oh. editor-in-chief. I'm always sure he'll be partying at the all-star, maybe. Which, they always have one baller, like, every year, maybe during the playoffs sometimes. Who would you put on the cover of GQ this year? They've had Harden. They put Harden, Lynn. Who are the recent ones? Anyway. Who would you put on? Um, Kelly Oubre, come on. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. But just like in streetwear, that would be an amazing look. I feel like Giannis, underappreciated. Yeah. Has you know? he already been on? I feel like the no. Bucks are underappreciated. Let's they've talk about that. The best record about in the Bucks. league. Let's go. What do, you think, what do you think their chances of going into the playoffs? I like them. They're sick. I, think, like the, I think they're going to go deep. I like them for uh, Eastern Conference Finals. They're a fully, complete, completely formed team. Like, I wouldn't change a thing. With Miritich, I feel like they have it all. I do, too. And, and I, I don't think we've seen him up to his strengths, and I want to see him in a playoff scenario. But, like, they're complete. Eric Bledsoe on the low is such a good player, man. He's going to be awesome in the playoffs this year. It's always weird with a team like the Bucks that kind of, they didn't come from nowhere, but they don't have a long track record. This is their breakout season. They're great on offense. They're great on defense. Right now, they seem to sort of be in that category of like prove it in the playoffs, which I think is kind of stupid, but I also kind of totally believe with the Bucks. I'm like, come on, we can tell they're good. Their offense is great. Defense, they have a superstar. They've got. Bledsoe and Middleton. And, and Middleton and Brogdon mm-hmm. can play and Miritich is a great pickup and I'm like Brooke Lopez man everything about him screams everything this works. is a They're very complete. real very good team that will has a very good chance of going so to the finals don't, why, don't, like, why don't you hear about him I'm like yeah I let's, think it's let's the market. see, see that, that's Do how it. I feel about the Nuggets the Nuggets to me are the western counterpart that is really good winning lots of games but somehow I just don't believe in them but the Bucks, I really I believe in them well, I think it's because like it. in the past, uh, having one superstar was enough to get your team some attention. And now that there's this popularized theory of like having a big three or having like five goddamn mm-hmm. all-stars on your team, people don't really believe unless you have that. And outside of Giannis, who is a recognizable name on that team? They have two all-stars other than them. I mean, we our preview kind of came correct, right? Like when we did the preseason cookies like there there is a big three in in milwaukee a bonafide one and they just added like some really great 
I mean, there is a big three, but ask anybody outside of like basketball nerd them who Chris Middleton is, and yeah. they'll be like, "Oh, my accountant." But and that's the, not. And Middleton didn't even deserve to make the All Star team either. Like if he, you, Bledsoe and even maybe Lopez and like have been better, but Bledsoe for sure. But Middleton is a star in the way Draymond is kind of a star. He does mm-hmm. things that don't show up in the box score, but he's a, a wonderful player to have out there, and their success is kind of predicated on him. Well, I mean, but, but I think we were talking about why nobody talks about the Bucks is because nobody knows who they are. Well, it's Milwaukee. Yeah. It's just the market. They're not on TV that much. And there's also the situation with them coming out of the gate really strong, people being kind of enthusiastic about him and Giannis and him being the sort of front runner for MVP kind of continuing to do his thing and people just sort of getting bored of talking about it where it's like, yeah. yes, 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 yes. We know that they're doing yeah. great, but James Harden has scored 40 for yeah. the last uh, seven weeks. So it's him now. And people are like, have you heard about Paul George? Paul George is now the MVP. And it's like Giannis just kind of became old news. In Giannis part, fatigue. Yeah, yeah. And, and in part because they're a small market. It's not like they're, you're seeing him on TV dropping 40. And Every I, night. I also think old school fans or even like media types don't gravitate towards him because I think there's a bias against someone who has those physical traits being like, yeah, he's unfortunately his nickname is a freak. So people are just like, yeah, he's amazing. But like Paul George is the one with the real skill. All Giannis does is like dunk, you know. Mm-hmm. But this conversation is interesting to me because like I think there's a divide between uh, like – like we, you say like NBA nerddom and and real NBA fans like, you know, three of us here play fantasy sports and Bledsoe doesn't last long. Middleton is off the board like that, and then people are like, oh, they're they're underrated players. I'm like, no, Drew Holiday goes like number fifteen. Like no one lets Drew Holiday slide. But when you hear them on TV, Hubie Brown is like the most underrated player in the league, and you're like, well, for who, right? So like. We're talking about like different ways in different pockets of fandom here, and I think people recognize the Bucks as a real threat, but it doesn't really convey through media. Well, just doing a super quick search of the NBA like national schedule, which includes ESPN, TNT, and NBA TV, I guess TBS, whatever. Just just running through it super quickly. To me, it looks like the Bucks basically are on it like almost like half as much as the Celtics, a lot less than the Sixers, you know, obviously far less than the Lakers. I mean, the, the, the understandably, bu- I mean, like, the, yeah, the Bucks play half as many national games as the Lakers. And there's no dysfunction. There's no story, juicy story to talk about with them, really. Yeah. Perhaps that's why. And like, so if you were planning TNT scheduling, would you rather have the a, a bad to okay Lakers team over an amazing Bucks team? Probably. Like Lakers all day. All day. It's like when, when the Knicks are on Christmas Day, everyone's like, they suck. I'm like, they're going to get better ratings than I mean, most of them. It's the same, same deal with Toronto. Like, we've seen Toronto and the Bucks play a few times recently, and so it wasn't good. like people were like yeah. chatting about it going into it, but the, Bucks, but the Sixers play the Celtics the other night. That was like a playoff And everyone's game. like, Sixers, Celtics, here it is. I'm yeah. like, those aren't the two best teams in the conference. Totally. Yeah. And people are still talking about it like it yeah. was a meaningful game, which, of course, it's not because it's a – Pre All Star yeah. Game and, Eastern Conference and talk about drama. Toronto's fascinating. Like the Raptors have had a lot of drama happen in the last few years, but we don't talk about them as much as we talk about like the Sixers or even we don't talk Knicks. about anything as much as we talk about the Sixers. Are you saying you want to talk about the Sixers? <laughs> oh, now that you Let's bring just, up the Sixers, yeah, yeah I know. Are you <laughs> feeling I, as if there's a dearth of Sixers wanna, content? I just want to get it over with, really. Why didn't they take a point guard of some sort? Oh, oh man, man. Oh. We're triggered. I have no answer for that whatsoever. It's a little bizarre. So they turned down Pat Beverly in that deal? Really weird, man. I, don't, <laughs> I wonder <laughs> if they did. I, I would assume that they didn't only because they don't have him. Like, you know, if you're going to trade for Tobias Harris and take on two more contracts from the Clippers and you don't have a point guard on the roster besides T.J. McConnell. Yeah. The legend, the go. Yeah, they're really riding TJ McConnell super hard. 20 minutes a game or something. It's Fucking wild. wild. It's really weird. It's ride or I mean, die you, with TJ. Watching that Celtics game, it was like the fourth quarter. Like, So this game is going to come down to whether Reddick can defend Marcus Smart in the post. Like All of your machinations and your four stars, it's going to come down to 
Redick playing defense <laughs> in the post. I'm like, man, this is going to be a gnarly way for the season to end in like three months. Like Marcus Smart just beefing up and bodying Redick, and you're like, that's it. And that's the buyout the market season. is getting thin. Like people are just getting snatched up. It was rich, but now like now you're waiting for Alfred Payton. How are we not talking about the the newest Raptor? The oh, uh, Toronto legend Jeremy Lin. It was amazing. Um, is he going to play up there? He's going to play. He already played in his debut, right? Uh, I just think immediately if I think about that, I just think about like still latent racism towards him being like, this dude is terrible. I'm like, he's been in the league a long time at this point. Like he's kind of good. Uh, this year his stats aren't up to par, but he's had a weird injury three years, but he's good. Is it racism? The reason that people just act like he's bad? Yes. 100%. I, I, I agree with you. Yeah. Lynn's proven that he's a totally capable player. Mm-hmm. No he's... one makes fun of DJ Augustine. I know. And I was like, oh, he fucking sucks. Ugh, Augustine again. It's like, what's the problem with Lynn? People on Twitter are just like, TJ McConnell's actually a solid player. I'm like, oh, we're defending TJ McConnell now? It's like... Lynn is definitely good. better than TJ McConnell. Lynn is an for asset sure. for a few more years on any team. I mean, he's getting kind of up there in age, but... That was a that was a great signing, but then unfortunately I didn't know Van Vliet was hurt. So that real I thought that was going to add depth, but it just looks like a replacement. I mean, Lynn is not a great defender, but he can shoot. He can run an offense. He's a very good passer. He's aggressive. His he gets to the line. He's a. I he's think a good Lynn's player. sanity probably hurt him too a little bit. People being like, he's not that good. Yeah, yo, he, he actually sucks. Right, which is like a product of racism too. But like. Even boosting him to that level. It's like, can you believe there's a Chinese guy on the Knicks? I'm like, I cannot believe it. I just can't believe it. And his ethnicity sort of like underscores all these things. Like he went to the Rockets because they needed to replace Yao Ming. And then it's like he went to Brooklyn because they have like, there's a Chinatown in Sunset Park. I'm like, yeah. Toronto. Well, naturally, yeah, because yeah. they have a huge Asian population. It's right. like everything and is like. LA as well. LA, right. Everything, there's like an alternative reason for him being there besides the fact not he's because like he's a, good he's a pretty good basketball yeah. player no it's marketing yeah. shout out to charlotte lynn when he had his craziest hair the rooster yeah yeah that one i don't even understand what the marketing angle was there <laughs> didn't make sense jordan was just like he reminds me of me <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so the yeah so the sixers and celtics man any any more takes from that game it is Embiid shook people have been saying horford occupies Real estate in Embiid's mind. Is that true? I don't think so. I think... No, it came Horf- down to I, a foul. Yeah. I, 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 to me, it's like... Horford is clearly a very strong man. He somehow has the strength, unlike most centers, to kind of hold Embiid at bay for a little while. And that way they can like attack with, with like double teams if they want to. But generally, he can kind of stonewall Embiid in the post. Horford is like made of iron or something like that. He's just really good at, at holding his position. He's staunch. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they, they're built to stop him. And fortunately for the Celtics, they've been going against LeBron and we're building a team to defend against a power forward who distributes. So like Simmons, who's not as good as LeBron, easily falls into that category. So like they can stymie those guys. I thought Jimmy Butler is a difference maker. Tobias Harris, like, kind yeah. of. He's good. He's, if he gets hot, that's yeah. good. So, I've, yeah, Philly shoots a little better. They win that game. But there's still no answer to, like, Kyrie or even Rogier or um, or Smart. Smart's, yeah. Philly just doesn't have guards. So, yeah. as, as you were saying, like, why didn't they pick one up? I have no idea. I've been begging, like, a little infant will, for will it two years for they, a guard to be added to And they have, like, 20 wings. It doesn't make, it's it's bizarre. Will it cost them a 2019 finals burst? It could. I, I, I would say yes. I think it cost Just them a finals quite burst. simply that. I think it cost I think it cost them one last year. Having one guard, they would have beaten Boston. I think they drag Boston with one guard. Where's Jared Jack? Where is he? Maybe not him. But I was like anybody, man. Th- like <laughs> Riverside, right? Just like Yogi Ferrell, and you just beat the brakes off of Boston. <laughs> like just one guard who can yeah. sort of defend, shoot, and like dribble a little bit. Oh, they holiday? should have picked up Isaiah Thomas in the offseason. Have Isaiah oh, that as been the Boston beta? Ooh. That would have been fun. But the, uh, I asked about Horford and Embiid because I feel like everyone has been talking about that matchup because that's what we saw at the end of that game. And it's kind of cool because like 
the story that people inject in there is like, well, Horford does everything correctly. He's a fundamentally sound player who beat this new player, Embiid, at the game of basketball with a capital B. He set the right picks. He took advantage of space. And Embiid was cooked by, like, he was schooled by the, the older generation. And I'm like, no, it came down to a foul, and Embiid had a bad night. Came down to fundamentals, bro. Yeah. I love that. I mean, Embiid I also had two threes that, like, rimmed out. And you're like... Yeah. Like, it was a, a one-possession game. Like, there's flip. nothing really proven. I just feel like every time they're going to go out there, it's going to be like... All right, so a lot of teams don't have the, the personnel or the discipline to relentlessly attack, like, Redick or TJ. Boston has both. Right. So it's like your defense against Boston is as good as, like, your weakest link. And in the Sixers situation, it's going to be one of those dudes because they can't take either off the court. If you take Redick off the court late in the games and put on TJ... You don't have a shooter. You put Redick on, you can't defend. Like, one dude who could have done both would have been transformational, and now they're stuck in this. They're going to f- be facing Boston in a crucial sh- situation. With no guard. With either TJ or Redick on the floor. And, and if it's not Boston, Bledsoe can torch him. Yeah. Kyle Lowry can torch him. Man, Brooklyn is a bad fucking matchup in the first round. It's so like one it's of these nice. teams is going to go down in the Dude, first just, round, man. When it's like, okay, cool, we got to guard Russell, we got to guard Dinwiddie, we got to guard Levert. How do you do that if you're Philly? I even like Napier, man. No, he would have been a good guy to pick oh, up. I love Napier, but sign for what? A, a couple one point five a year, two a year. When with that a team happened, option? we were both like, oh, with the that team was the option fit. for the second one. I know. Philly officially fucked. I mean, <laughs> they like, need that thing. They need that thing, man. They, and they can get it. It's out there. They just have to be... Alfred Payton would be a good solution there. P-H-U-C-K-E-D. But And people are like, Payton can't shoot. It's another wing you can't shoot. I'm like, you don't really need him to shoot. You need him to dribble. You need him to facilitate. And you need him to defend. That's it. Also, shoot a little. Just a little. More He's than a TJ. bad shooter. He's a bad shooter. He's in like mid-30s and, and from three. That's okay. Yeah. TJ has great bit. fundamentals, though. Uh, slaps the floor. Dives for loose balls. Legend. Scrappy. Well. Well, Noah, um, do you have anything to plug? Um, record just came out, Bowie's. Uh, a couple shows in L.A. in a couple days. Can you talk to us about the name of that record? So a bunch of the songs talk about what I would call human software, kind of just thinking about impulses and where they, they take us. Uh, so I started thinking about human bodies as buoys, sort of this thing on the surface that's kind of pointing to something kind of secret that's hidden inside. Oh, I like that. That's a good it. record. I love it. Thanks, man. Yeah, you you were praising the record yes. on the way here. It's very, very, very good. Yeah. Thank you. Enjoying it immensely. Thank you so much for having me. This was super fun. Anytime, Noah. And yeah, thanks for coming. And if people want to see your tour schedule, where do they go? Google... Panda Bear tour dates. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. Well, yeah, where do you go for Jesus, that? Jesus, Grandpa. Days? Where? Yeah, how do I find out? I don't know. It's like go no, to I, Panda I feel Bear. That. I feel like I should be able to give you a specific answer, but I don't even know my but own website. There is no like um, like a uh, concert tour listing that's comprehensive anywhere on the line. Like ticket Master or something. I don't know. But a lot of tours don't work with Ticket Master. Right. I just what about to, uh, Oh My Rockness? That's good for like New York. Nice. That's good. Is Song Kick? Yeah, I go there song kick just came Brooklyn Vegan. Brand. Brooklyn Vegan's awesome, man. And Stereo Gum is good. But like, there's no like running coherent list. Like, like basketballreference.com for the best the site for ever. shows. Yeah, exactly. But that's Run site out of a church. Is, yeah, there was a New York Times profile about that website. That's a great story. How did, how, I had no how, idea. How did we not think about that? I know. Who would have known that Cookies has run out of your walk in closet? The lab. The lab. Oh, the the lab. Sorry, sorry. The, stu- the studio. <laughs> uh, well, Can we get the interns in here to clear up all the mess that I just made? Yes. we we'll get the interns in here. No food, just design. Noah, thanks again. Thank you, guys. Cookies. 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 Okay, we've got breaking news here. <laughs> Are those the sex cops' cries? I don't know. That didn't, whatever I did, didn't That's, even sound it's like. It's called the uh, Dale Demps siren. Dale Demps. 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 Dale Demps. Dale Demps. Dale Demps. Dale Demps. Dale Demps. Dale Dumped. Oh, After eight years as the New Orleans Pelicans general manager has been shown to the door. 
And it also comes after our prior conversation about how the organization has struggled to deal with the Anthony Davis situation. So, Dell Demps, out. Is it about time for this to happen? I mean, what can you do, right? Terrible luck with Boogie. What can you do? I mean, The AD thing was kind of out of his control. I think he played it fine. Like, what can you do with a disgruntled superstar? Like, that's the hardest thing to deal with. You could trade him for an entire Lakers team, which is what the Pelicans wanted him to do, and he refused out of hubris. 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 I was... And trying to stick it to Magic Johnson. As someone who's dealt with a disgruntled superstar for years on this exact program, (laughs) I feel Del Demp's pain. But no, but he's done his his tenure was defined more or less by several deals. You had the Chris Paul trade, mm-hmm. in which the league vetoed his trade to the Lakers, and, and then superstar Eric Gordon on the team, right? Roster. And then and then and ended up with Chris Paul going to the Clippers. Then he had the uh, Drew Holiday trade, where he acquired Drew Holiday for two second or excuse me, two first round picks from no the Sixers. No well. Then the Cousins trade, and now the Davis situation. I don't know that any of those were bad. I think he was a bad GM in terms of like working the margins, finding talent. He drafted horribly. Uh, Buddy Heald was okay. I, right, right. I just mean, in general, they did not accumulate much talent from the draft over the last eight years in the way that one would anticipate a fairly bad team doing. They don't have good players from that. They gave up first rounder for Omar Ashik. They've done... They, they gave up a lot of their picks, and they did not develop a lot of talent. They signed some guys that weren't good. But in those four defining things, the Chris Paul situation, Drew Holiday, Boogie Cousins, and Anthony Davis, okay, I guess? It's, it's fine. Yeah, like, the New Orleans, was a good, the New Orleans for Drew trade was a good idea. He, Drew ends up being an all-NBA candidate. And New Orleans is amazing, but like I think he'd do that trade every day. Right, and then the other pick became uh, Alfred Payton, which the Sixers turned into Useful. Dario Saric. So, right. so two like solid guys, but Holiday's certainly had a better career, except that he didn't do it for the first few years because he was injury prone, and they're, now they're paying him like a superstar, and he's playing like a star. You know what's so, frustrating? Yeah. It's like... Everything's set up for a GM to kind of crush it now. So if you have an owner being like, okay, you have the per- my permission to trade AD. Now you have my permission to trade Drew Holiday. You're just like, okay, I, there's something I can work with. And then they fire him. Odd timing, considering what happened with Davis. Is okay. this, Jordan, are, is this like an olive branch to Davis to say, okay, you're here now. What about we make this work? No. Is there any chance they can make this work? No. I don't think that... I think they are showing Davis now that they will trade him in the offseason. I think they might be like, hey, man, play for us the rest of this season. We'll trade you. Are they saying, however, Dell Demps is not the man we want making that decision? I believe so. I think that he, from my, my sources tell me that uh, many in the Pelicans organization were happy just to wash their hands of the Davis thing and take the insane Lakers hole, even if it wasn't exactly what they wanted. It's a good foundation to to rebuild, and he didn't go for it, and I think that cost him his job. I don't think that they, I don't think going forward into next season, they were certain that he would uh, look at the situation with clear eyes and remove the anger from his heart. When you have someone like. Demps, who's been in charge for eight years, and then you look at ownership, they may not be on the same page. They may have said, look, Demps, we like you. We're comfortable working with you, but now it's time to pull the plug, and we want to we wanna, like, do a hard reboot, and we don't think you're the guy for that. We enjoyed our time together here. You helped try to build this. You swung big for the fences with Boogie Cousins. You did some things we liked, but you're not the guy to like scrape the bottom of the barrel and, and, and turn this around again at this stage of your career. Maybe you don't want to embark on a rebuild after eight years. Was it a mercy firing? It, I, to some degree, I feel like it's like, look, we're just turning the page here. And I did get a 
not, not an anonymous DM. It was it was not it was not a it was not a a source in the same way as the uh, Colangelo Ringer story. But I, someone did hit me up recently and say, slid in. They slid into the DMs and they said, "You don't have to believe me, but I heard that Hinky was meeting with the Pelicans." Who's I, that? Who's Sam Hinky? Ah, uh, you just <laughs> fucked yourself know, on I your fucked, joke. Yeah, God damn it, Andrew. But again, this is just someone saying this that, <laughs> that, 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 that they had heard this. But he would be a, a good guy to bring in if Who you want to trade Samuel? Drew Holiday and start a rebuild. That was very law and order of you, by the way. Who is? Oh. You're like, like, wait, I didn't tell you his first name was Sam. <laughs> There's no way the one guest star we have, Martin Short, is the actual killer. <laughs> Like, oh, it's Whoopi Goldberg. She's certainly <laughs> just a concerned uh, social worker, Priest, yeah. not orchestrating a massive crime ring. Oh, Ed Bagley Jr., you're here just as a good Samaritan. <laughs> so anyway, Sam Hinkie confirmed taking over the job in New Orleans. Which is interesting. And you're right. Like, it, it wasn't a mercy firing or anything angry. I think it could be both things. It could be they liked what he did with Magic and, you know, holding him to um, what they wanted with Boston. And then last night they could have been like, you know what, everything has gone well. Last night didn't go well. It's, it's about time, man. The one thing I will say, though, and I do believe mm-hmm. that it, it could have been time to just call the Dell Demps experience a wrap. The timing is a little wild, though, where it is a bit like, it was shocking. all right, dude, can you just get out of the building, though, also? Like, it's can like, you just put your shit in a cardboard box and be out because, like, this thing with Davis has turned ugly and stupid and we don't like it and we kind of wanted him gone and a deal sorted out and you didn't do it yeah. and now it's this. And, like, there's no strategic reason to fire a GM now. He can't make any decisions until the summer. Mm-hmm. So they just wanted him out right Maybe now. Maybe the reason that uh, Rich Paul and Anthony Davis left the arena early was to warm up the engine. For the- <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, like, okay. Dell. Now the boys are waiting in the parking lot. <laughs> We've already boxed up your shit. It's in the trunk. Of the, <laughs> Jump in the Demps truck. Yeah. Let's get out of here. The, the, Demps, the Demps truck. But it's like when a GM drafts like a player and the team's like, we stand by this pick, and then a week later they're fired. It's just like... We saw that in doing? Phoenix with yeah. uh, McDonough where they're like, love everything you did with the first pick in the draft yeah. and everything, and you're also fired. <laughs> yeah, for not taking Luka Doncic, right? Yeah, I can only look at this as they were sick of seeing Del Demps like, in fine. the building, and yeah. they thought it was creating more problems with his presence than even just sort of the boring continuity of waiting to the summer to fire him on like, you know, after like the final buzzer of the season. You're like, and Demps, you're done. Yeah, and he's not a unique management guy. Like, you can find another Del Demps. Even though the boogie trade was pretty inspired, I think everyone's eyebrows got raised when that happened, being like, you're going for it in a really unique way. Yeah, I don't, I mean, in retrospect, the Chris Paul trade was not a great trade. They got Eric Gordon, who didn't even want to be there, who ended up being, like, a decent player, but not a star. Injured. I feel like maybe they got Aminu in that deal also, or whatever. They did not get key building blocks for a rebuild out of that deal. I feel like they did miss the opportunity to tell Demps live on camera at the All-Star game that he'd been fired, like the same way the boogie was moved. That'd be great. Why don't they do that? Yeah, they should have done that. They should have had him... Oh, was that why they did it? Because they're like, okay, it's the All-Star break. It is started. It's official. All-Star weekend is here. You're fired. Is that what it was? I think so. Sure. Like, you're going to be apart from the team. How about you... Don't, don't come back. Don't, yeah. don't go to Charlotte, Dell. Change the locks on them. Also, the fact that they're the Hornets and Charlotte, they just were like bad situation sending yeah. Hornets, Pelicans, Charlotte, ousted them. Yeah. Later, Demps. Well, Wait. anyway, that's the kind of instant response that you get from when the cookies broadcast. I don't want to make this into another whole pod, but you mentioning... It sounds like you do. You mentioning the Chris Paul thing. Did you guys catch wind that the NFL asked Silver to be their commissioner to consider the job of NFL commissioner. Did you guys I, hear this I story? Didn't, I didn't hear about that. Which is interesting, I think. Uh, can, he said no. Because that could usher Jerry Colangelo right into the uh, commissioner right, of the NBA right. position. You have a good relationship with those guys, right? Yeah, we're super good. Yeah. Hey, cool. you know how you're succeeding at every level and everybody loves you. Would you like to come and take control of a sinking ship? <laughs> sure. You know how football's trash? 
um, <laughs> and like everyone hates us. Well, it was controversial because he said that if he was the commissioner of football, Colin Kaepernick would be in the league, and that kind of got people's attention. I mean. I mean, if anybody was the commissioner of football, Colin Kaepernick could probably be in the league. Uh, I don't know. Colangelo? I mean, it is. The, the Kaepernick thing is still just wild, though. Yeah, that's it's a like whole like other thing. Yeah, the NFL is something that, as George said, you steer very clear of. You know what else I'm steering clear of? Doing another pod, man. This was just an emergency is bonus. It, was it the perfect emergency? Is it? Yeah. 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 Is, this, is this tacked on or is this a whole other episode? It's tacked on. Okay. Bonus content. It's not like Cookies 125.5? No, this is still Cookies 119. All right. Well, Cookies. 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 cookies.